we're going to go ahead and dive right in. The time is 12 noon. Today is October 9, 2024. I can't believe I'm saying we're already almost to mid-October. Um, as a reminder, today's office hour is with the main DOE assessment team. Any questions that come up for you during the presentation, please feel free to either jot them down or to post them here in the Zoom chat box. And we will be addressing questions at the end of today's content, as well as posting a Q&A summary following the office hour. So for those of you who we may not have met before, uh, quick introductions. My name is Jody Bossio-Smith, and I'm currently um, the assessment director here at the main DOE, and I'll pass it along to Michelle. Hi, I'm Michelle Ganglefinger. I am the MSAA alternate and the ELP assessment coordinator, and Dr. Lewis. Good afternoon. I am the... National Internet National Assessment Coordinator, and I'll pass it on to Krista. Hi, everyone. I'm Krista Averill. I'm the Assessment Coordinator for the main three-year assessment, as well as the main science assessment. Leah Jarvis, our business analyst, is not here with us at this meeting today, so I'm going to pass it to Daniela. Hi, my name is Daniela Crone. I'm the office specialist for the assessment team. As usual, we will run through recent updates and important reminders for each of our assessment programs. This includes our general assessment, which are the main three year in reading and math and main science, um, NAEP and international assessments, as well as the access and alternate access, which are for Maine's multilingual learners, and the MSAA, which is Maine's alternate assessment. As a reminder, technical assistance is not only available to all districts upon request, but it's also already in full swing for this school year. As all of you know, we are in a current open administration window for the main three-year assessment in reading and math. Um, I know Krista has been out in the field and working with districts on targeted technical assistance. And by targeted, we mean assistance that's really designed to meet the unique needs of that SAU. So if you have needs around technical assistance for state assessments, we encourage you to reach out via this form um, and submit a request. And the team will make every effort to support with the request, including if we need to partner with another team here at the department. Data requests. So we've had a few inquiries around um, availability of data. Um, the 2024 ESSA dashboard is not currently available, as all of you probably know. The main DOE data team continues to work on the loading and validation of the assessment data, following which um, other members of the data team will be able to actually populate that ESSA dashboard. If you are looking for suppressed data from 2021, 22, 23, uh, you can look at the publicly available ESSA dashboard. Legacy data um, are available via the link in these slides, which Daniela did email out to our registered participants this morning. And to access data from unavailable academic years, you may submit a data request um, via the data warehouse page, which is also linked in this slide, slide number three. And um, the data team will work to fill that request as quickly as possible. Preparing for the 2024-25 main educational assessments before we dive into updates around the main three-year in reading and math. Next slide, please, Daniela. I do want to provide the reminder that the assessment security resources are available now. We do currently have main SAUs that are receiving technical assistance around assessment security. So for our district and school level assessment coordinators, there is a specific security training video. We also have linked here the assessment security handbook. For administrators and proctors, there is the overview training webisode, which takes no longer than five minutes, um, as well as a resource around when irregularities occur, if they do occur, what happens next. And that resource is really just to help guide our administrators and proctors who we know are doing their best um, to have a valid administration of the assessment and 
if something comes up that was unanticipated, um, what do they do next and how um, both their district level coordinator and potentially main DOE can support them. As a reminder, all staff who are administering the main educational assessments must sign the security and data privacy agreement. And this can be found in Appendix A of the Assessment Security Handbook. The SEU is responsible for maintaining those agreements through the school year. And in the event that an irregularity does occur that Maine DOE has to support with, we will sometimes request um, copies or information from those security agreements. And for now, I'm gonna pass it over to Krista, our coordinator for Maine through year in reading and math. Excellent, thank you. So first we are in the fall 2024 required administration, which ends in about two and a half weeks on October 25th. And you can see the other windows for upcoming administrations on the slide. So first reminder during this open registration, Open administration window is assessment resets. So within the slides that you received earlier today is the link to the assessment reset process flow. There are some very specific circumstances under which an assessment reset may be appropriate for a student. Um, please note, however, that resets erase all student progress and generate a new test ticket. It is not possible after having a reset completed to go back and get that student's previous score. If you are looking to request a reset, they do need to be submitted by 4 p.m. on October 18th, and we would not be able to accept any reset requests after that time due to the amount of time it takes to investigate them if necessary, approve them, and then for NWEA to be able to fulfill that request with enough time for the student to reassess. So October 18th at 4 p.m. is the hard deadline for the submission of assessment reset requests. Just another note about the open admin window, reporting groups in Acacia are necessary for instructors to be able to see their students' scores. And the reporting groups should be created by the end of the administration window. So in the slides provided, there's a link to the user and student management guide, which you can access for information on how to create groups. And NWEA has shared a great trick for quickly and easily identifying those students who are not in reporting groups. So there's something called a testing status report from operational reports. If you download it and look at column AO, which is for reporting groups, if there's nothing there, it means the student hasn't been assigned yet to a reporting group. So a quick, easy way to check if necessary. Also, the exemption from the reading assessment for multilingual learners. So newly arrived multilingual learners may be exempt from only the reading assessment if they have a U.S. school entry date in synergy within 12 months of the last day of the administration window and they have an ML start date in synergy. If you have both of these things entered in synergy, then the data team will automatically process that exemption after the close of the administration window. And in the slides is a link to the ML exemption guidance document. Because the through year assessment has multiple administrations, that guidance document provides the exact dates for exemption for each of the administrations. We've also been receiving some special consideration exemption requests. So as a reminder, a special consideration is a request for a student to be exempt from one of the MEAs due to a significant medical emergency. And those special consideration requests can only be submitted during the open administration window. So for that fall through year assessment administration, that would be October 25th. And in the slides is the link for directions for submitting those requests. Also to put on your radar is the SAU data cleanup. So this cleanup period started from the very beginning of the window and it runs through November 1st. Although some of the activities do need to be completed as early as October 24th. So I would make sure that you look at that cleanup checklist to determine what needs to be done. So ensuring your demographic information is up to date and synergy is the first thing which you would need to do by October 24th. 
making sure you utilize the student import errors report, which has to do with the import of scores from Acacia to the MAP platform, and then also removing students who have transferred out of your school. So if you are not the individual typically responsible for data cleanup, please make sure that that individual still gets a copy of this checklist. We also have one more understanding scores session coming up tomorrow, actually at 3.30. And so this session is based on questions that have been received from the field. It's a little bit different than the sessions we've held in the past. And because of the questions we've received, the focus of tomorrow's session is very heavily assessment design and psychometrics. So if you, everyone is invited, of course, but if that's not quite what you're looking for and you need something a little bit more introductory, um, reach out to me and we can make arrangements for that to happen. Tomorrow's session, there were a lot of highly technical questions and the session is gonna answer some of those highly technical elements. We also have several NWEIPL offerings happening right now. Um, I would recommend the Balanced Assessment Systems for Leaders. That's on October 16th. There's a lot of really good resources that come out of that, um, a workbook, a learning centers document, as well as like a mini assessment for different assessment types. Um, and in order to receive those resources, you need to register and attend. So highly recommend there will not be another session too for balanced assessment systems for leaders this year. Um, this is the second time it's been held. So I do highly recommend that one in particular. And of course the whom do I contact page. So we are in the middle of an administration. If you're having issues in Acacia with a secure browser in Mark with pre-administration activities, um, or support while you're administering the online assessment. For example, if you get an error code, NWEA main partner support is your best resource. If you have a student who is not appearing correctly in your NEO roster, please reach out to Medem's help desk, which is now the Medem support team. And if there's questions related to content accessibility, scoring, reporting, policy, all of those come to me. And if you have a student who appears on your assessment roster in NEO, but not Acacia, you can send that to me as well. Just noting that we have a slight hiccup right now with our daily change file for the through year assessment. Um, so if you are not seeing a student and you have an urgent need to get them in Acacia, please reach out to me. If you are not assessing within the next two days, if you could wait um, so we can resolve that in a more automatic process but I am definitely willing to manually upload any students if there's an urgency to do so. So please reach out to me if you're noticing any issues in Acacia and you are assessing within the next two days. And transitioning to the main science assessment. So the reports became available in the Kite Reporting Platform yesterday, October 8th, and the resources to the Reporting Platform Guide, which is really just how do you navigate the platform, and the Score Interpretation Guide, which is how do I read these reports, are linked on this slide. I've had a lot of requests come in for access to the Kite Reporting Platform. I am actively working on those. Um, I am prioritizing the fixing students in Acacia first at this time, but I'm getting people in Kite at the same time. So if you've reached out to me, um, please be patient as I'm working to resolve both of those at the same time. We do have two main science assessment understanding and utilizing score report sessions coming up. The first will be October 29th, and then a second one will be held the following Monday November 4th, and the registration links are on the slides. So for the main science assessment, because we are really just in a reporting period and not a pre-administration period, if you have questions about reports, please reach out to the Kite Service Desk first. They may send you back to me if you need an account made, that's fine, but please contact them first. And then of course, I'm here for your content accessibility scoring reporting and policy questions. 
I do want to note that the Adam platform is closed right now um, to main SAUs in schools until early spring. Adam is really just used for pre-administration and administration activities. There are not um, student results reports in Adam. Also, just as a reminder, some of the resources that we have. So practice test tutorial and tutorial codes are currently available through the link on the slides. There's also a link on our webpage. And you can see there kind of an example of what it looks like. So it's meant to really familiarize students with what the actual assessment environment would be like. Whereas for the released items, those are test questions that are no longer in use and have been made available to the public. So questions students have seen in the past. These are PDF booklets of questions. So there's a first student copy that resembles a test booklet pretty much exactly like what a paper-based test booklet would be. And then there's a for teachers version, which has the answer key standards alignment and rubrics for constructed response questions. Because there's several different links for those, you would want to go to the main science assessment webpage and look under the content drop-down menu. And just a reminder, looking ahead to spring 25, we have some changes coming up like the removal of session four, a shortening of the high school sessions from 60 minutes to 50 minutes and a separation of the high school and grades five and eight administration windows. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. G. Very good, it's really short today with the national and international assessments. Next slide, please. Just a reminder, this is what's happening around the country in NAEP, and you folks have a year off, so oh, please enjoy it. Um, it. It includes the field test and our transition to school devices. Next step, the slide, please. And here, this just gives you an idea of what's happening, and we have had some inquiries about when the NAEP data is going, going to be released. Um, and it is being delayed for partially because of for political reasons and not and to keep it out of the ele election, but also more importantly because we do have a um a, a study that is comparing the performance of the assessment on, on the on the new Chromebooks that that we're using in comparison to the old Surface Pros. So uh, when that is finally or completed in its entirety, we will be able to validate that the uh, assessment is the same, hopefully, on both devices, and then we will be able to report the full resor results. And that that's our goal. So hope hopefully this winter we will hear more. And right now we're hearing that the results will be out in February. Um, um, other updates are included on this slide, and we can move forward in the next slide, please. And we, I'll turn this over to Michelle. All right, so that's me. Um, we can move right on to the next slide. We'll talk about access and alternate access a little bit. Just wanted to point out, in case you weren't aware, we have recently updated the webpage for the English Language Proficiency Assessments. So if you have not had a chance to go to that recently, I would recommend um, checking out the available resources there for administering the access and the alternate access assessment. Annual training has changed just a little bit, just so that you are aware that we are now recommending that test administrators certify annually before administering the access. So those assessments that are needed, the that need to be done are listed out there. It's also listed on the main state WIDA webpage as well. There, just to make sure that our students, so October is the time that our students need to be identified by in order to make sure that they are in the platform, the WIDA AMS platform for the January administration. So just making sure that districts are making sure that the ML students all have an accurate start date in Synergy. That's really important to be done during October. If 
There's also a new NEO contact update that I just wanted to point out. An email did go out about this, but just wanted to just remind everyone that there is that new contact. It's an important contact. That's how we, that's one of the ways that we look to see who those district coordinators are for our multilingual programs. So make sure that that's updated. If you have any questions on that, certainly feel free to reach out to me, but there's the little um, screenshot there. So that way you know how to do that. We've had um, a couple of facilitated virtual workshops that have been scheduled. One of them is actually took place last week and this week, so it's too late for that one. But we will have another facilitated workshop coming up. The attendance um, for that has been, we've had great responses on that. So it is pretty full right now. So if you aren't able to get into that, um, if we do have any spots available, we certainly um, reach out to me and see if that's something that you could still get into. This one's been really popular when language and disability meets. So um, this will be offered in December. And these, um, we've got some professional development opportunities coming up. Basically, these are for new test coordinators, um, people that are new, but certainly anybody is welcome to attend um, these for the alternate or the regular access coordinators. And as Krista always shows us and points out, these are our contact information. So we have it for the alternate access as well. So just who to reach out to in case you do have questions as they arise. So the WIDA um, for secure portal information, reaching out to WIDA, um, WIDA AMS, if you have technical is issues when that gets a little bit closer to the window. Um, and then of course, you can always reach out to me with any questions that you might have. MSAA. So this is not much going on with MSAA right now where the window doesn't open until March, but so looking at February and March, just wanted to list out these important dates for you as it gets so as it gets closer, things will start to be a little bit more active with that. But for right now, things are kind of quiet for MSAA. And there's just a couple of trainings that I wanted to just keep on your radar for one for November and one for January. And here's the contact information for MSAA.